Hey everyone, my name is Kajal and today we will create an obstacle avoidance robot using IR sensors in VBOTS. For today's VBOTS tutorial, we'll start by adding an EPUC robot to our VBOTS world. Next, we'll go over how to add controller code in VBOTS. We'll be writing our code in Python. We'll start by learning how to drive a differential drive robot like EPUC. Then we'll look at IR sensors. Next, we'll combine both of these aspects to write the logic for obstacle avoidance robot. I've included the timings here and in the description below. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's start by creating a new project in VBOTS. To do this, go to the main menu, File, New, New Project Directory. Click Continue. Choose a folder where you want to create this new VBOTS project. Each VBOTS project can have multiple worlds and controllers. Different robots in different worlds can access any of the controller code logic as long as they are all in the same project. So you can create three different worlds with different obstacle configurations to test your obstacle avoidance code. Enter a name for your project and click continue. In this next step, we are creating a new VBOTS world within our project. Enter a name and make sure to select add a rectangular arena. Click continue and click done. Now let's add a robot to our VBOTS world. To do this, click on the plus sign, which will help us add a node, which is our robot. You can go through the options or you can simply search it using the find bar and then select the EPUC robot, click add. As I mentioned before, we're going to do an obstacle avoidance robot using IR sensors. Now it can be tricky to see these sensors on the robot, but in VBOTS, you can visualize distance rays created from these sensors. To do this, go to the menu bar, view, optional rendering, show distance sensor rays. This is going to be helpful to understand how we use IR sensors for obstacle detection. Here's a quick look of the EPUC robot in VBOTS documentation on the Cyberbotics website. As you can see, we have camera, LEDs and IR sensors. The IR sensors are named from PS0, PS1 all the way till PS7. As I scroll up here, you can see more information about the EPUC robot. Make note of the two motors used to drive the EPUC. EPUC is a differential drive robot and later in the tutorial we will see how to drive EPUC in VBOTS. Now we'll create a VBOTS controller. This is where our Python code will go. Go to the menu bar, File, New, New Robot Controller. Select Programming Language as Python. Give your controller a name. And click continue. Make sure to select open file in text editor and click done. As you can see, it will open an editor with few lines of code. This includes basic code to run the robot along with helpful comments on how to drive the motor and read sensor data. I'm going to make a few changes for a better code structure. I'm renaming the time step variable as I intend to use it as a global variable. I'll also create a main function and a run robot function. You can run the Python code as it is, but it's a better practice to include a main function. We'll start with motor so we can drive our EPUC. We have to create a motor instance using getDevice method from robot. To do this, we will need the motor names. You can find this information in documentation or you can also get this information from the scene tree. Let's see how to do that. Go to the VBOT scene tree, click on EPUC and then right click. Then click on convert to base node. As you go through the scene tree, you will find the motor names left wheel robot and right wheel robot. We will use these names to create motor instances in our VBOTS controller code. I'm calling my variables left motor and right motor. 
as mentioned before we'll use the get device method next we need to initialize them by setting position to infinity in vbots you can drive the robot using position or velocity by setting position to infinity you are indicating you will use velocity i'm also setting the initial velocity to 0 throughout this tutorial you'll find me using velocity and speed interchangeably Now this is quite a bit of code so let's step back and see what we've done so far we've created an instance of robot to refer to our epoch we pass this to our function run robot we've created instances of motor that can be used to drive the robot next is the main while loop this loop will run as long as our simulation runs this is where our main logic resides that is to read sensor data process it make decisions and then drive the robot accordingly so let's learn how to drive our robot as mentioned before we will give speed to our left and right wheel motors i'm going to create another global variable called max speed for epoch in vbots the max speed is 6.28 once again you can see this information in the scene tree similar to before i'm going to use the set velocity method to pass max speed value to drive our motors now before we run the simulation and see how this work we need to tell our robot epoch to use this particular controller code that we just wrote to do this go to the vbot scene tree scroll down to controllers and click on it then click on select to select the controller code that we just wrote in my case it's called obstacle avoidance also make note of the fact that you can see a list of other controller codes that are also part of this vbot project after selecting the controller click okay make sure to keep saving your vbots world and let's run the simulation i found an error i'm going to change the time step to be a constant value of 32 save the python code reset simulation and let's run it As you can see our robot drives forward in a straight line. Now we've given both of our wheels the same speed so it's going forward. What if we wanted to turn? Let's change the speed for our left motor by half and run the simulation. As you can see it turns left. If you let this drive it will take a circle return to its original position and keep going along this circle. What happens if we change the speed to a quarter of max? As you can see it will take a smaller circle. Basically by changing the speed you can get the robot to turn at different angles. So far we've been changing the left speed. Let's change the right speed to see what happens. As you can guess, it's probably going to now start turning right. Let's see that in simulation. I also want to show you another case wherein I give completely opposite speed. For one wheel we have positive max and for another wheel we have negative max. Let's see what happens. The robot is turning in its own place. Now depending on which wheel gets positive or negative, the robot will turn clockwise or counterclockwise. I strongly encourage you to try giving different speeds and see how the robot drives. Here's a fun thing for you to try. Can you get the robot to move backwards while turning left? Next, let's focus on our IR sensors. As I mentioned before, Epoch has 8 IR sensors, also called distant sensors in Vbots. Similar to motors, we'll create instances with get device method using the name PS0. We also need to enable the sensor by passing the time step value. To read the sensor values we'll use get value method. We'll write this in our main while loop. So as the simulation runs and the robot drives around, we'll keep reading the sensor values. Let's run the simulation and observe the values we get from our IR sensor. You should notice that one of the rays became red. 
basically this particular sensor has been activated and is now reading values let's observe the values as the robot got closer to the wall the values went from around 70 to over 100 so using this sensor value we can detect a wall ahead of the robot how about when we have obstacles so let's add some obstacles to our webots world similar to adding a robot click on the plus sign now you can go through different obstacles or simply search for a rock i'm going to move this rock around I'll add a few more rocks. With that, we now have a few obstacles in our world. So we know using the IR sensor, we can detect an obstacle, and we also know how to drive the robot. So let's combine these things to create an obstacle avoidance robot. To avoid running into obstacles, we will detect them in front as well as on our sides. So we'll make use of six sensors, two in front and four on side. To keep things simple, when we detect an obstacle, we'll simply turn in place until there are no more obstacles in front of the robot. Let's code this logic. First, create a list to store all of our sensors. Next we read the values and create our if condition. Our goal is to turn if we see an obstacle else drive forward. Another way to say this is drive straight unless you encounter an obstacle. So let's set our default speeds to drive forward. I'm creating left speed and right speed variables and giving it the default value of max speed. If we detect an obstacle, avoid it by turning. So we will change the left speed so that the robot turns in its place. Save the code and let's run the Vbot simulation. I have a syntax error. Let's fix the variable name. Let's run the simulation. Our obstacle avoidance robot started turning randomly. That is there is no obstacle in front of it yet it's turning in place. To debug what's going on, let's print the sensor values. As you can see we have a few values over 70 even though there's no obstacle. Let's change the threshold to 75. Run the simulation. It's now avoiding the obstacles but still there are a few glitches. So let's change the threshold value again. The reason I bring this up is because depending on your Vbot's world configuration, choice of robot and obstacle, you will have to change the threshold value to get good results. Running the Vbot simulation again, and as you can see it performs much better now. If you're looking for this code, I'll leave a link in the description. Before you leave, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.